As a dad myself, I can say from personal experience, regardless of my training, fevers can be scary for parents. And when your child is suffering from fever, it can be hard to think straight and make important decisions. So learning what causes fevers and how to treat them will certainly help in this situation. So let's take a look at what causes a fever. You see, everyone has an internal thermostat that regulates the body temperature, and the normal human body temperature is around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus about one degree, or this would be 37 degrees Celsius, plus or minus about 0.6 degrees. When the human body detects an infection or another illness, the hypothalamus responds by raising the body temperature to help fight the condition. So when taking a rectal temperature and it's over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, this would be considered a fever. Remember, it's not always necessary for a child with a fever to see their doctor. It really depends on the age of the child and the other symptoms that they may have. Now, let's talk about managing the fever. You see, fever cannot be accurately detected by the old-fashioned simply feeling your child's forehead rule. It's actually necessary to take their temperature with a good thermometer. Although there are lots of thermometers on the market that measure temperature in different areas, parents really should use rectal thermometers whenever possible, and especially with their infants or babies, to be most accurate. And then once the fever is detected, the most important things you can do is improve your child's comfort and make sure they get enough fluid so they don't get dehydrated. Now I know, while your heart is instinctively wanting to bring your child right to the doctor's office, it just may not be necessary, especially if the child seems fine once their discomfort's treated. Now let's talk about keeping that fever at bay when the fever is not serious. And though not every fever needs to be treated actually, there are some things you can do to help make your child more comfortable. Treating the child with acetaminophen or ibuprofen will usually reduce a fever. It's important to make sure that we give the right dose though and at the right time for your child. If your child's under two years of age, it's important that you contact your pediatrician or pharmacist for the correct dosing. For children old enough to be noted on the directions of the box or the medicine bottle, the over-the-counter medicine then will give you recommended doses written right on the label. It's important to not overdress your child when they have a high fever. Other practices to reduce fevers, such as an alcohol bath, ice packs, etc., are no longer recommended and can actually have adverse effects on your child. A fever will cause a child to lose fluids more quickly, so offer plenty of fluids to avoid dehydration. If breastfeeding, maybe increase the feedings to help supplement in order to make sure the baby is hydrated. Dehydration signs include crying without tears, a dry mouth, fewer wet diapers, and even a sunken fontanelle. Keep your digital thermometer ready and accessible so you don't have to search for it once your child is ill. Keep the oral and rectal thermometers clean and sanitary between uses. Sometimes thermometer sleeves help with this process. Now the following are some helpful hints to keep the process smooth during a fever situation with your child. Have the following tips handy. I like to print it and tape it on the inside of the medicine cabinet for easy access. This could also be a good idea for babysitters too. It's important to have appropriate children's acetaminophen or ibuprofen on hand. And write the specific dosing given by your pediatrician down. Make sure your pediatrician's phone number is handy. So you may be wondering, well, Roy, when do I call the doctor? And the following are some good guidelines for when to call your doctor. If your child has a fever, looks very ill, unusually drowsy, or is very fussy. Maybe they've been in a very hot place, such as an overheated car, or they have other symptoms. This is probably only gonna depend on how the child communicates, but if they can tell you they've got a stiff neck, a severe headache, severe sore throat, severe ear pain, if they can't talk to you, tugging and, and poking at the ear is a good sign of that, unexplained rash, or repeated vomiting or diarrhea, and maybe they even have signs of dehydration such as a dry mouth, sunken soft spot, significantly fewer wet diapers, and they're not really able to take in fluids. These are all good times to call the doctor. Now, maybe they've got an immune system problem such as sickle cell disease or cancer, or they're taking steroids. Have they had a seizure? Are they younger than three months or 12 weeks and have had a temperature of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius or higher? Maybe if their fever rises above 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius repeatedly for a child of any age, these would be good triggers to call your doctor. 
It's important to know that other important reasons to call your child's doctor is your child still acts sick once their fever is brought down. Your child seems to be getting worse. The fever persists for more than 24 hours in a child younger than two years of age, or the fever persists for more than three days or 72 hours in a child two years of age or older. Remember, if you ever feel as though your child is having trouble breathing, has a lowered level of consciousness, or becomes unresponsive, activate 911 or your EMS right away. This should not be delayed, and if you're gonna make a mistake, rule on the side of safety. That's what EMS is for, and it will buy you some peace of mind.